This is the second of two lectures on aqueous misdirection and malignant glaucoma, again specifically focusing on practical pearls. And in this second lecture, we're going to discuss some of the concepts around management of aqueous misdirection and malignant glaucoma. It's important to remember right at the start that this is a serious, potentially blinding condition. And if we look at the aims of what management involves, we can see why quite often it may be necessary to admit a patient into an inpatient ward. So let's have a think about our aims of management. We're faced with a patient with a shallow or flat anterior chamber and potentially very high intraocular pressure. The eye will be inflamed and painful. Now, I've divided the seven aims into the first four, which are often found within the textbooks, and the final three, which are often not talked about. So the first four aims, we want to reduce aqueous production. We need to shrink the vitreous body. We need to move the lens iris diaphragm posteriorly and we need to tighten the zonular complex. But these are very inflamed eyes and we need to take measures to target the severe inflammatory response. There's going to be a lot of topical therapy going into an eye which often has corneal edema and so we're going to need to protect the ocular surface. And finally, we must remember that this is a patient who's often recently had an operation. They're in pain and they're frightened. And so we need to control their pain and ensure that they understand what's happening at each step of the management process. So if we think about those aims now, let's, let's stick on medical management for a moment. We give atropine, usually in a three times a day dosage. And atropine paralyzes the sphincter muscle of the cerebody, which gives us increased tension within the zonules. It flattens the lens profile. It moves the lens posteriorly, and it gives us a deeper anterior chamber. However, it's very important indeed to supplement the atropine with topical phenylephrine treatments, often at a 2.5% four times a daily dosage. And what this gives us in addition is that we tighten the zonular complex by co-contraction of the longitudinal muscle of the Siri body. If you enjoyed this lecture so far, please subscribe to http colon forward slash forward slash iop dot vision. I hope you enjoyed this series as much as we have putting it together. Thank you.